The family stood before their new farm. They surveyed the fields of hay and grain, the cows, the orchards, the gardens. It was a delight to behold, and they sighed. For one hundred years, no one had stayed longer than a year. The farm was unlucky. Apples rotted when picked. Cows gave sour milk. Grain shriveled on the stalk. The farmer spoke to the farm. O oh, farm, I have been a good farmer all my life. I have done well with the land. Never have I seen you before. I have done nothing to harm you. Will you be unlucky for me, who has done you no wrong? They heard a strange, shrill, very angry sound. They looked around. No one was there. The farmer said, uh, Who are you? Uh, uh, if, if we survive until spring, please come and visit us. Uh, yes, come in the spring. The grain ripened golden in the hot sun. Hot winds came, but not all of the grain shriveled. Apples ripened bright red, and not all of them went splush, yuck, when picked. Enough milk was sweet to make cheese and butter. If they were careful, they would survive the winter. Christmas came, and they had a good Christmas feast. The farmer's wife gave him a pair of beautiful boots. She had made them. They were so beautiful, he decided to wear them only at supper time. Never would they see mud. After supper, he loved to stretch out his legs before the fire to admire his beautiful boots. Spring came and mud season. Mud. Glorious mud. And farm chores continued as usual, even in the mud. One night, as the family gathered around the table, they heard a sound at the door. A strong gust of wind blew the door open, and there stood a little man of curious appearance. C -c Come in. Uh, yes, be welcome. You are the first people in 100 years to invite me to visit. Then they knew this was the elf of the farm. A farm's fortune depended on the good or ill will of its elf. The little man went to the dining table and looked over the food. I am hungry, he said. He looked at the loaf of bread. Uh, w w would you like a slice of bread? And before she could cut the bread, the little man scooped up the entire loaf and swallowed it. He pointed to the roast, which was for the whole family. Uh, would you like a slice of roast? My wife does it just right. Before he could cut a slice, the little man scooped up the entire roast and stuffed it in his mouth. The family looked on in amazement. The little man pointed to the farmer. Follow me. I have a gift for you. Uh, I, yeah, yes, let me change out of my supper boots. No, come now. Uh, uh, yes. The farmer hesitantly went through the door, following the little man to the cowshed, which meant crossing the sea of mud. Sploosh, sploosh, splat. He tried not to get his boots muddy, but it was no good. They were mud-covered. The little man stopped at the cow shed and pointed to a small opening. That is the door to my cave. <laughs> oh, laughed the farmer. That is too small. I can't go there. Magic, put your toe in the hole. Which he did as he spoke and whoosh, he was gone. The farmer tentatively did the same and whoosh, he was down in a snug cave. Roots came through the dirt roof. A fire merrily burned at one end. A cast-iron pot hung over the flames. The little man filled a bowl with what looked like porridge 
Uh, is this my gift? Uh, I need a spoon. The little man handed him a spoon. He took a spoonful and was about to put it in his mouth when splop! Some brown stuff dripped into the spoon. Then another one. Cow manure! Ugh! Yuck! Yes! said the little man. For one hundred years, cow manure drips on my head and into my food. I do not like it. For that, I make the milk sour. Oh, is that why the grain dries and shrivels and the apples rot? The farmer thought quickly. This is my farm, to do as I please. Um, what if, what if when the mud dries, I move the cow shed away from your home? Will you let cows give sweet milk? Deal! The farmer found himself back in the cow shed, heedless of his boots. He ran back to the house. And when the mud dried, he was as good as his word and moved the cow shed far from the elf's cave. From then on, the cows gave plentifully of good rich milk, half of it cream. Grain was so golden and full that the fields looked as if they flowed with butter. Apples, plump and ripe, dropped off the trees under the farmer's hands. It was a beautiful farm, a lucky farm. When you welcome and give hospitality to strangers, you may be entertaining angels unawares. <laughs>